Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Egyptian Library Association, I would like to welcome all the attendees in Bibliotheca Alexandrina. It's my pleasure to moderate the first session of EFLA Division 5 meeting, which is about talking, taking up care of information professional advocacy. We will begin from Dembebui. Uh, good morning, colleagues. Apologies for the hiccup technology. Um, I'm standing in for a colleague from Zimbabwe who couldn't make it up to here because of the um, political situation and the challenges that they face, Hosea Dogwe. Um, Hosea is from Zimbabwe, and the title of his presentation is Strengthening Capacity of, the Li of Zimbabwe Library Association through sustainable partnership, convergence, and AMP inclusivity, synergy for leadership development. Looking at the paper, he gives um, some highlight of the aspect that needs to be encompassed on the leadership. And he's doing that under the, uh, under the auspices of the Zimbabwe Library Association. On, on his introduction, he indicates that his paper takes a look at the leadership in librarianship at national association setup to juxtapose it with the strategic alignments. Also provide some literature reviews because as I go along, you would see he keeps on quoting in the process, uh, it comes with some literature review. And the aspects that he's looking at uh, within the leadership, it's direction, process, coordination, expertise, caring, sharing, and the morals. Um, as part of his introduction, he indicates that leadership within a library community is critically imperative in the awake of constant technological changes and developments. And um, with the challenges of budgetary shortfalls and the volati volatility of the job market for library professionals, for this discourse, he gives outline of professional leadership as providing direction, process, and coordination to the membership of the organization for the purpose of attaining the organizational goals. Um, and again, he emphasized that he's looking this uh, under the auspices of the Zimbabwe Library Association. And what motivates him to write this paper at, for today is he's motivated by the late uh, member of the association, the late president of Zimbabwe Library Association, Mr. Lanten Fusire, who always encouraged him to prepare and present conference papers at regional and international level. He also, uh, <coughs> The late Mr. Fusire also motivates him by inspiring from the former Secretary General Harriet Ngube, who continues to believe in him and has always inspired him to write conference papers. Um, looking at leadership, he explained personal leadership as the personal behavior of leaders in performing the responsibility of professional leadership, including demonstrating expertise, building trust, caring and sharing for people in acting in a moral way. For leadership to, prop, to prosper, there is a need for library communities where persons follow the lead set up by management. Those who cooperate and contribute to their efforts to realize the goals of the organization. Willing cooperators who are engaged in the common purpose to do more than follow they willingly contribute to the efforts, thus enhancing leadership. When he speaks about the aspect of direction in the leadership, um, according to Bennett, publication 1938, a main part of leading is being out of front and providing direction. Perhaps the most important direction leaders provide is the function of defining the, the common purpose. At National Library Association, the mission statement should communicate to the organization and to the common purpose uh, as a primary reason to exist. Effective vision provides a simple idealistic goal, present a desirable future, 
and that he picks that up from Benny's and Nanus, 1985, and Cousins and Posner, 1995, and creates a stretch towards the common goal. As a process to the vision and the common goal um, comes the process. And the process is critical to the success of leaders' direction in providing, implement, implementing, and man managing the systems. The process has its goal, the attainment of the common purpose of the organization. Three especially gave elements of an effective systematic processes. Members have to have confidence in the process provided by the leader. Uh, in effective attaining the common purpose. And each member should understand how his job contributes to the whole effort. And lastly, the process itself should be focused and continuous uh, improved as they go along. You've got the common goal, you've got the vision, you've got the uh, mission statement, then it comes that you, co you need to coordinate all these uh, um, items. The first and most basic function of coordinating is the acquiring of essential ind indispensable to operate <coughs> an organization, sorry. <coughs> Coordination as part of leadership is both an individual thing and a systematic process. It is an individual in that each leader must provide leadership to provide the indi individuals that he supervises. It is systematic in each and every leader, and they must contribute leadership for the maintenance of the organization. Professional leadership encompasses the formal part of leadership, setting the vision and the mission for the organization, creating a process for achi achieving organizational goals and aligning processes and procedure, people and infrastructure to achieve the common goal. And in this whole uh, process, as he indicated, the individual's leadership, each individual bring an expertise to the whole process. And the expertise is the, is the perceived ability and the competence of leaders, as everybody in the uh, committee is a leader. Competence has been found to be a key element of positive perception of leaders by members and an essential characteristic in effective leadership. And in, whole, in all the, again, as an individual coming to lead, to provide leadership, a concerted effort, they should be caring. And in this caring, it indicates that each and every idea is very important. Each and every voice must be listened into. It's like a drop in the ocean, and a drop is made out of the, of the ocean. And sharing. After we've um, done all the processes of leadership, we, sh we need to share with the membership, we need to share with the whole LIS community. The sharing of authority also is the basis for empowerment, mm -hmm. a key component of participative leadership, which has been found to be related to effective leadership. Sharing pertinent to information is effective tool in communication. You cannot see it and do strategic manage it, uh, management and all that for the association and uh, not communicate to the members. Um, and um, if we come as a leadership, we need to have a brand. We need to have morals. The code of ethics plays a role. The moral behavior is defined as a providing a moral code that is a guide for behavior of leaders and members in performing their responsibilities. The membership needs to have in trust in looking at you. We need to have a code of conduct. As you little to listen to that little voice to hear what is their contribution, you also need, as we know that at IFLA we all sign the privacy policy for IFLA to share the information that you've given uh, to them to give your name to the next person. So it's the same that applies with library association. You need to observe a code of conduct and also um, uh, some morals in order for people to have trust in you. And colleagues, in conclusion, 
Um, personal leadership encompasses the personal behavior of leaders in performing their responsibility for the professional association, including expertise, trust, caring, sharing, and morals. Organizational members must have confidence in the expertise of the leaders, and they must trust that leaders are doing what is best for everyone. This, therefore, will ensure that those who hold leadership position at national association level-headed their organization well and a shining beacon of the members that they lead. I thank you. Thank you. The next paper for the, from uh, New Zealand, Mr. Uh, Robertson, please. First of all, I should apologize for the title of this presentation. It's not very clear. What I'm trying to do is make some things clear about information, but I realize now that I've made the title complicated in English. Um, I called it uncrossing wires because there is an English expression which is to have your wires crossed, which means to be confused. Um, I'm trying to uncross the wires to separate things. Okay, the main point of this presentation is to say two things. In the first part, I want to discuss uh, a few questions about the, the definition of information, what it is for different people. And in the second part, I'll do something quite different, which is to talk about how people in the IFLA regions can advocate better for library association purposes in their countries. Now, there is a connection between the first part and the second part. Simply, I thought that if we understand better what information means, not just libraries but information, what's the difference between libraries and information, then if we understand these things more clearly, then we can advocate better, more clearly, to authorities in our countries who often have power over us as professionals. I hope that hypothesis is correct. Well, very quickly, I'll go through this quickly. A few years ago, like about 20 years ago, the United Nations decided to hold a world summit called the World Summit on the Information Society. And this was based on some concepts that had been circulating in the late 20th century since the, the age of the PC, popular, uh, popular personal computing. And information had been seen by United Nations bodies, by government authorities in many countries as something vague and nebulous that would support many uh, social and economic processes. And if you cast your mind back, those of you who may be of my generation can remember perhaps that UNESCO had a thing called UNICEST which was func uh, focused on systems. Information was systems. And then UNESCO also had a program, a general information program, which focused on libraries and archives, called PGI. And then later on, it developed a program called the Information for All program. And that was information. It didn't say libraries, it said information. And then later, even more recently, in 1992, UNESCO invented, or Archives, the Archives Council invented a program called the Memory of the World, which focused on preserving cultural heritage information, which was information in libraries and archives. And all of these programs of UNESCO focused on different aspects of our work, different aspects of the work of archives, but libraries and archives were seen to have different characteristics from the culture division of UNESCO, the education division, 
and the science division. But nevertheless, it was obvious that information went across all of these different areas of UNESCO work. So UNESCO developed things called transverse programs. Somewhat like the IFLA sections where you have some vertical sections specializing in particular types of libraries and across you have the regional sections which intersect at different points. And UNESCO also had a program on communication and media more recently, which is not called information, not called libraries, not called archives work, it's called communication and media. Still, it's information. And then let's consider that when the International Telecommunications Union decided to hold a, um, a major international meeting at the end of the 1990s to pick up on developments with what were called information superhighways, to pick up on developments with the web, the World Wide Web, which was new and revolutionary, to pick up on developments with computing for everyday life. The ITU was not a cultural organization, it was a technologically based organization. It still is, it's there, it's a UN body. It proposed to the United Nations General Assembly to hold a world summit on the information society. The word libraries did not appear in that concept. And the UN General Assembly approved this concept and decided that information should be placed in the middle of a program called the MDGs, the Millennium Development Goals, which would be hopefully achieved, these goals would be achieved at the, from the beginning of the present millennium. Remember, the millennium was a thing, it was exciting. Remember the year 2000? Slightly hysterical fears about computers melting down, you remember that? Well, the MDGs were a program and the United Nations General Assembly approved the proposal from the International uh, Telecommunications Union to hold the World Summit on the Information Society. And this summit was held in Geneva. The first one was held in Geneva in 2003, and IFLA was there. IFLA was an NGO, so it had very little speaking time, but it was able to make submissions for the program of the summit. I was there as a New Zealand government representative, but being a librarian, I was also extremely favorable to the positions of the NGOs, although I was not allowed to say so because I was a state representative. Um, and so, those of us in, in state, represent, uh, state uh, delegations who had knowledge of library and archives work uh, managed to include in the outcomes document <coughs> excuse me, of the World Summit some language which was um, quite positive about libraries, about access to information, and we supported the positions put forward by the NGOs such as IFLA. I recall that Alex Byrne, the former president of IFLA, was there. At that World Summit, ideas about libraries were included. In this summit on information, there was originally not much talk about libraries because information was viewed as bits and bytes. It was a, a process that had to be managed by uh, communications ministries, by government departments dealing with trade. Uh, it, it had a strong economic aspect to it. And those of us who wanted to take a, a broader view managed to include some good words about libraries, as I said. Um, fortunately then, the outcomes of the summit included some good language on public domain information, official information uh, put out by governments, and language on the uh, use of ICTs for all, for marginalized groups in developing countries, for example. And 
the summit talked about such things as multi-purpose community public access points, including in libraries, or as they are sometimes called, telecenters. And the summit also talked about digital public libraries and archives. It talked about national library strategies and legislation about hybrid libraries. But these were all concepts which were loosely based on uh, trying to accommodate definitions of information with definitions of a more humanistic view of libraries, which was not the original purpose of the World Summit. The summit talked about a people-centered, inclusive and development-oriented information society. It tried to develop a good definition of the information society which we had talked about in the 1980s and 90s. You remember Al Gore maybe talking about information superhighways. Well, this concept uh, made its way into UN uh, thinking and ended up on the table of the ITU which developed it into the outcomes document of the uh, World Summit on the Information Society 2003. And we included in that outcomes document words about access to information and knowledge without defining information, but still we, those of us who put in those words understood it to mean libraries. We put in words about sustainable development and, and the need for improving the quality of life. And remember that the context of this summit was about international development. It wasn't a middle class idea to make things better, to, to keep on better serving those who were already well served. It was a process to try and develop services for those who were underserved and in need of support for economic development in national uh, life and in, across continents. But particularly there was a focus on Africa and in small island states. And the outcomes document also noted uh, aspects of the uh, provisions of the UN uh, Declaration on Human Rights, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, particularly access to information qualified only by um, you know, the right to, to have information qualified by uh, the need to respect other people who also had rights which might uh, conflict. That is Article 19, moderated by Article 29. And the UN uh, World Summit document talked about public institutions such as libraries and archives. It talked about preservation of documentary records and the information economy. But then There was a second World Summit in 2005, also run by the ITU, which moved the process forward. And the main outcome of that document, as far as we in the library sector are concerned, is that it uh, established a, a, a very important process for inter internet governance. And the Internet Excuse Governance me. Forums became uh, established as an annual process. Excuse me. Yes? Two minutes. Yep, OK. okay. The, um, the process from the World Summit on to 2015 was very slow and patchy. It didn't really succeed. And in the end, in 2015, the U UN community decided to uh, stop, the, uh, stop that process and uh, develop a new one towards sustainable development goals, which were less prescriptive, more flexible, more open-ended. Now, s some people have noted, IFLA has noted, that the word libraries is not very, doesn't have a very high profile or any profile in the SDGs. And we wonder, does that matter? Well, I would say it doesn't matter because in the fourth goal, it talks about libraries supporting education. The 11th goal talks about libraries supporting sustainable communities. Goal 16 talks about promoting peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development. There is ambiguity in all of these terms. The definition of information is, is ambiguous and vague, but I think we can see relatively clearly the social outcomes. We're, th these 
these uh, goals are not focused on professional objectives of our particular profession or anyone else's profession, they're focused on social outcomes, particularly education, development, justice, peace. And I think that to answer the original question about leadership and advocacy, as I've said at the, at the end of that slide, with such a strong mandate in the SDGs, we should be able to convince our governments to plan to fund library services. And advocacy by the library sector is uh, important because if we understand the, the, what we mean by information and uh, what, how that relates to library services, then we can better advocate to our decision makers to authorities in our own countries. And as was said in the meeting, uh, in the President's meeting in, in Argentina recently, uh, libraries are not a cost but an investment. This is also picked up in the Development and Access to Information report. Now what can IFLA do to maintain the momentum of that agreement in, in Buenos Aires? I suggest that we could consult with IFLA members to produce guidelines to develop uh, an analysis that would help us define the economic benefits of information services. Not library services, but information services. Sorry, and, Mr. Okay. The time is finished. And briefly, the Need, there is a need to persuade all our members in all our countries and all our regions to advocate to um, authorities but also to our members to explain to them what information is, what libraries can do and to encourage vocations so that even those of us in small countries with small associations can increase our membership because increasing our membership in our countries gives revenue to the associations, makes them stronger, as Hello Locha said. Uh, and if we have strong national associations, then we can have strong IFLA. And share maybe membership with other GLAM sector associations. Work more strongly with the regional offices. Many suggestions, but I think we should discuss those tomorrow. I don't want to run through the list now. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. The third paper from Brazil, we have uh, three colleagues. Three. Okay. Good morning. Um, my name is Maria Maculada. I am here today with uh, my colleagues Anderson and Adriana to uh, present you our work, Advocacy Building Skills and Competences in Brazil. I need to clarify that this work is not a uh, service based, but uh, based in perception, mainly in Adriana Works perception, uh, has president of Brazilian Federation of Libraries. Okay. The first uh, to talk is why this paper is important. Um, and you need to work about the concept, um, the difference for us in uh, advocacy and lobby. Advocacy is a new concept for librarians in libraries in Brazil and normally used by the third sector and is considered uh, the lobby of good because <laughs> lobby is a concept generally used by politicians and politics in a bad way. Um, our scenario is um, in Brazil about libraries is you have a, a big number of libraries, um, more, more than 78 libraries, one, each one is at the national libraries, more than 2,400 academics, more than 6,000 publics, a small number of community-based, and uh, 69 more than uh, school libraries. Uh, but libraries in librarians are not this hair space in, in Brazil because many things are considered libraries is just the shelves and books, nothing more. Well, another aspect is um, our recent election for president in the state governor uh, and his line of conduct about libraries extinction of the Minister of Culture, so strong for us, loss of some achievements, uh, 
uh, no public policy for libraries, and there are no adherence to the associative movement uh, by librarians, unfortunately. Now, Anderson, we talk about And look at this situation, this scenario. FEBABI, our National Federation of Library Associations, uh, create some strategies to minimize the situation and uh, engage our librarians. The first action we'd like to highlight is uh, in 2008, we promoted a course with Marci Mediola, director of the ALA, attended by professionals from Sao Paulo, our, the biggest state, state in Sao Paulo, in Brazil. In 2012, FEBABI has a work that to translate a lot of important documents from IFLA, from other associations. And one very important for us was the Library Advocate Handbook created by, uh, by ELLA. In 2013, uh, FEBABI starts a campaign, a success, successful campaign called, in Portuguese, Eu Amo Eu Quero, Biblioteca Eu Amo Eu Quero, in English, Library, I Love, I Want It, seeking to make society aware of the role of li libraries. And in other hand, also calling libraries to action. Uh, we create posters, folders, shirts, a lot of products to, to engage our community, librarian community. Other action, in 2016, uh, Febby participated in the EFLA International Advocacy Program, which was a capacity building program, uh, designed to promote and support the role libraries can play in the planning and implementation of the United Nations 2030 Agenda and the Sustainable Development Goals. In 2017, two strategic uh, actions were carried out by FEBABI from this training. The first one was the creation of a, uh, produced a booklet entitled Alive Libraries to show the importance of libraries and analyze the proposals of candidates of the area. And the second action, oh sorry, I will be back here. Uh, this action was important because included uh, mayors is that a booklet to mayors, to governors, to presidents, future presidents. And the second part of this action was uh, uh, a series of meetings in Brazil. We have a, a, a FEBABI organized the biggest uh, event, librarianship event in Brazil. It's a Brazilian Congress of Librarianship and Documentation and Information Science. And to, to engage our colleagues, FEBABI create a lot of, a series of events called Esquenta CBBD, uh, is a preview of the event. Using the theme, the theme of the event, how libraries can contribute to the implementation of Agenda 2030. As one of the results of this action was the elaboration of a booklet too, uh, of experiences of libraries all over the country. And public libraries, school libraries, Academic libraries is a very interesting work. Like uh, Adriana has a cop here, if you want to to to, to see, to, but it's in Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> but it's an interesting action because we can highlight a lot of initiatives in distant uh, cities of the country that includes library in a life of the people. So it's pretty interesting. In 2017, uh, a memorandum of understanding was signed with the United Nations Development Program. And between 2017 and 2017, uh, was, uh, we have an articulation between FEBABI and ECLAC, Economic Commission of Latin American Caribbean, during the months of October 2017 to March 2018, culminating in a construction of the Santiago Declaration, a declaration of access to information. So, Immaculada, my colleague, presents a, scenario, a, a terrible scenario in Brazil, but it's, pre but it's true, it's terrible. We are living in a bad moment in our country uh, because libraries are under severe treat and we believe that only by libraries and librarians we, have to, we, we, are, we, have, we can change the situation. So, it's necessary the librarians who are in the labor market and those who chose this profession can mobilize society in defense of libraries. There is no, no place for professionals who are not productive. 
Libraries need to be together with their communities, and especially to support vulnerable people. This is our statement in Febabi. Back to Adriana. <laughs> so, uh, we're mapping the set of skills and ability to develop advocation. We find in this document some aspects to um, skills for advocates. And you can keep. Considering the professional library is an energent mobilizing of change, works mainly to build a more just and equal society as advocated by 2030 Agenda, and the access to information is the right of everyone to build a democracy, progressive and diverse society, libraries are responsible for connecting people to the world of knowledge so that they can use it in all aspects of life. And in this sense, we define a set of 11 skills and competences that are complementary and are the same level of importance. The, the first competence is knowledge of the environment. It means we want to, see, to say that it needs to know the environment where the library is inserted. What's the hierarchy of power to understand the political origins, parties, alliances, stories of decision makers, regulations, laws, and the other aspects who have influence in the under, under library's life. The second, information technologies. It's information technology is, is um, a skill, is important for all librarians, but in this sense, it's essential to know the resources and tools available with preeminence for social media and understand the principle of web, web page design. The other one, sustainability. Understand how the library's budget is built, who decides what information is taken into account in the construction for, of the bu budget. Getting to, to know the founders, founders agencies, and other possibilities to provide the necessary conditions for libraries to play their role in society. Project development, development. Ability to draw up plans, but also know the language of projects to raise funds with governmental and no governmental organizations, companies, institutions, and others. Entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship with negotiation skills and maintaining political connections who are pers persistent in, def in defending their ideas, leading to their conception of problems and proposals on different level. As our colleague said in the speaking, an advocacy ecosystem, work in an engaging way. It's necessary to be part of the ecosystem being at the local level, the library, association of friends, supporters, at the regional level, the professional associations existing in our country, the national level, the Brazilian Federation of Library Association, and the international level, the IFLA. It's important to remember that advocacy is more than a like on Facebook. Government and governance. There are management styles that can include more or fewer spaces for civil society participation. This analysis is extremely important for identifying existing participation spaces or mobilizing for their creation. It's imperative to be present in spaces related to libraries. Creativity uh, brings solutions that may already be adopted in daily, li uh, daily life for working it's what we need to support the advocacy program. There is a popular saying, who has, not, who has no dog hunts like a cat, to realize everything that is around it and take advantages to overcome difficulties. Communications. Advocacy is based on good communication because it supposes engagement, mobilizations, and changing attitudes know how to speak in public, it's an art to be conquered. So some techniques can be learned such as auditory, etiquettes, in order that you may make communication effective. Resilience and, per and pers perseverance. Because advocacy is a process, we need to be optimistic in learning from mistakes. 
recognize, reorganize, and move forward. You must see mistakes as, as opportunities. Learn, start again, and do better. Love and passion. Everybody knows about it. I don't need to describe it, but do you love and are passionate about your profession? So the advocacy plan will be more li likely to be successful. What do you want about it? Uh, we want to dissemination of this material with the regional association integrated by FEBAB, the Federal Library Board, que é o Conselho uh, uh, Federal de Biblioteconomia. We have two organisms to um, organize the librarians in Brazil. Librarianship schools. Our strategy, train, promoting courses and events on site, in learning, developing a campaign focus on professional, and strengthening relations with IFLA. Brazil advocates leads, we need superpower. So, thank you for your attention. Uh, in, okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, at least, uh, from India, please. Good morning. Today we are going to discuss about uh, entrepreneurial librarianship. Oh, when I was uh, uh, doing the literature search, it is, it is based basically on uh, publications and best practices. Uh, I found that term entrepreneur is originated in French economics in the 17th or 18th century. And it used to be uh, the identify the ventures of individuals who stimulated economic progress by finding new and better ways of doing things. Uh, so this is the term originated basically in France and uh, subsequently uh, it has come into this business field. We the librarians are interested in social engagements and entrepreneurial activities since beginning and we are helping the community to achieve their dreams. We empower people, propagate intellectual freedom, assisting in equitable access to information, democratic conversation, creating network of knowledge, a lot of things we are doing. But uh, it seems that people's mind, there is an idea that librarians are all the custodians of books. But since beginning we are doing all these things. We and the entrepreneurs, we share certain characteristics, creativity, persistence, and passion. These things are uh, common uh, with the entrepreneur. They also have these uh, qualities and characteristics. The business entrepreneur measures performance in profit, but we the librarians are social entrepreneurs. We take into account the positive return to the society. We are among the most innovative Many think of innovation and entrepreneurism as only related to business, but librarians have provided the resources and ideas to their patrons. So we are very innovative way we are serving the society. It's not in profit in monetary terms, but we are contributing a lot in literacy, in uh, network building. There are three terms we uh, uh, frequently use, like entrepreneur, organizes, manages, and assume the risk of a business or enterprise. Or entrepreneur, an executive who develops new enterprises within the corporation. Now, this is a term, librarypreneur, I found in a blog post. It is not a very uh, used conventional way or formal way, but uh, it was something a new term to me, so I thought of include here who actively searches, a librarian who actively searches for unfilled needs in his her organization and assumes responsibility for meeting them. In that way, he or she is adding value to her position. Now, entrepreneurial librarianship. In the context of libraries, we define it's the act of undertaking initiative or providing leadership to meet the library goals and cost saving through creative ways. There is a definition I found given one of the author. is uh, entrepreneurial librarianship offers specific techniques for creating an entrepreneurial environment in the library or information services 
organization or initiating such techniques with a less successful operation already in place. Means it is like uh, we are discussing about disruptive technologies nowadays. Uh, like what are the less successful uh, operations existing uh, earlier, we are replacing those with this technology. So these are also innovation uh, and we are contributing in this process. Social entrepreneurship uh, model is very useful for libraries. And uh, because their mission and outcomes have the similar, uh, uh, there are similarities. So social entrepreneurs, uh, they identify innovative solutions to society's most pressing social problems. They are ambitious, persistent, taking major social issues and offering new ideas for wide scale change. We librarians do in a small scale, so it's not very much visible. Uh, uh, but we are doing uh, the same work as social entrepreneurs, they are doing in, to some extent. Social entrepreneurs, they develop innovative solutions to problem and implement them. What we do as entrepreneurial librarian, we proactively identify the opportunities to gain advantage through creativity and innovation. We inquire about users' need and then hold us responsible for delivering through our management, our services, optimize the outcome for the organization. Now, uh, when I was uh, writing this paper, I found there are very uh, less recognized people who have contributed uh, in, in this process. One is an uh, individual, he is from Bangladesh. Uh, he, used, he used to call uh, the distributor of light. It's in Bengali, it's, it's, it's called the uh, walking library. So his work is to, uh, while he was doing his morning work, every time he used to carry so many books. And it is a rural area, remote areas in Bangladesh. And he used to donate so many books. And uh, subsequently, he collected it. And that way, he was spreading uh, the literacy. <coughs> so this was, I found something unique. So I thought of sharing this with you. Another is Edina Kelly. He's in US. He's using a book bike. When, uh, when he used to travel with books with this bike, so these two I found very innovative, uh, so I thought of sharing with you. There are many more, uh, it's not possible uh, to share all, so uh, now let me uh, tell you something about the universities, what the university library they are doing. Uh, now one uh, university is OP uh, Jindal University, they have uh, in their um, library webpage, they have uh, given the entrepreneurship a very prominent place. So the university libraries nowadays are uh, taking a lot of initiative and giving uh, importance to entrepreneurship. There is a program in, uh, in uh, this uh, university, it's called Entrepreneurial Library Program. They are uh, customized the library and information services for client in academic, corporate, health, non-profit and other sector. There is a creative partnership. Uh, to uh, serve the entire community. So these are very entrepreneurial technique they are using. The Syracuse University Library, they highlights entrepreneurship in his vision statement. They say to be entrepreneurial, mean library staff members use their energy and intellect to reinvent and enhance their work, to heighten services to faculty and student and to preserve the collection. They assemble data, and knowledgeable teams to analyze and improve services, collections, physical places, and the digital environment. The entrepreneurial approach is questioning creative, resourceful. So uh, this university library, they have given a lot of importance to the entrepreneurship techniques. This is a feminist library. This is something very innovative. Uh, uh, it's not a... a formal setup, but uh, there is a social uh, uh, worker, she has developed this library, and uh, she collects only the books written by a woman, a uh, uh, lot of uh, poets, uh, poetry, uh, uh, literature, and he is sharing uh, this with the uh, uh, society. There is a, a background because in, in my country we have a male dominated society and sometimes the women's work are uh, unrecognized. So uh, this is the idea to promote the uh, work done by the women. So this is very innovative and she is single handedly, she is uh, 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 I mean uh, taking support from others uh, definitely and uh, 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 encouraging the people uh, to donate their work so that uh, it, it should be accumulated in one place and it will give a very good Im uh, image for the writer and all these women poet. 
There are others, example like human library. Uh, the, the idea was basically developed in Denmark. And then it came uh, in India around 2016, uh, Indian Institute of Management, they started this human library. It means uh, there are some unused um, uh, uh, assets. Uh, some retail people, they're very knowledgeable. So you can borrow them for a, a particular period of time. Uh, and they are the human, they are not the books. So the, that idea uh, is developing in Bangalore city also, we have this kind of human library. You can communicate with the British Council, sometimes British Council collaborate and uh, they organize events on human library. There is another thing on entrepreneurial thinking is uh, startup library, there is a course. In Guelph University, Canada, they have started some course uh, uh, on uh, entrepreneurial thinking. Then in, uh, 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 in 2016, National Entrepreneurship Librarians in Canada, it was formed with a dozen of members. All the members are not from library background, but uh, they also come forward. And all these British Columbia, Quebec, and they, there is a uh, group. And nowadays, I think members are number are increased. University of Toronto have entrepreneurship librarian and Waterloo also have their entrepreneurship listening librarian. So in Canada, uh, there are entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurship librarian post is created. Now this, we are uh, talking about creative partnership and all these things what uh, we have discussed earlier is it's a basically a creative partnership. It is not for generate profit in terms of money, but uh, for the uh, development of the society and in that way we are doing lot many things with uh, creating partners from different varieties of field uh, like public libraries they are now collaborating with the business archivist to know the needs now in uh, in uh, our country we have digital india project and lot of startup uh, uh, things uh, government is supporting so uh, they do not know the young people how to start a project or different types of information needs what are the risks so libraries are contributing and uh, they are government on their part organizing workshop and meeting and all but that is not sufficient. Uh, so libraries are coming forward uh, uh, in, in, to support the entire startup process. Uh, we, we know the uh, uh, traditional library has changed and now a lot of maker spaces is for collaborating, uh, collaborative learning and to share new skills, so these type of concept are evolving, it's already there in Europe and US, but in my place it's just started. So these are the maker spaces for... One, uh, I was uh, reading an article in New York Times, it was written by ALA president. She has mentioned and described some libraries, how they have changed, how they have um, um, uh, repurposed the spaces they have. And uh, you see this is a library, how there is a train line, uh, you know, you see the breeze, uh, rail transit, just uh, because it, it is an indication that you need not to come to library, libraries are coming to the community. So they are selecting spaces where they can get uh, the much more people and uh, in the lower floors, this is a very modern uh, architect. Uh, uh, chair uh, building and uh, floors are uh, having cafes, teen center, children's space, theater. So these are all very innovative uh, ideas. What we are doing uh, uh, in, in this uh, to contribute in this entrepreneurial um, uh, librarianship, we are taking additional responsibilities as chief information officer. We are uh, academic team advisor. We are developing MOOCs and online courses. Librarians are contributing a lot. Then uh, database expert, um, sometimes we are publishing. Library as a publisher and librarians are playing a lot of role. We are editing, uh, we are writing projects for grants. Uh, then sometimes we take the complaints, uh, we, uh, we are the chairman of the committee, book fair. So those are the uh, innovative things in addition to our traditional duties. So there are a few tips uh, we have to, uh, uh, you know, for the uh, aspiring librarians who want to be the great entrepreneurs. Uh, hard work uh, and client-driven approach. Uh, we have to understand what are the biggest pain of the clients. We can, we can uh, break few rules if it is extremely essential. 
inquire the complaints uh, then thought and reflection is very much important to exactly understand what the community want then uh, we have to balance the risk uh, we can be a problem finder and then value added services that is important and we can use disruptive technology which are already available the program for rebranding libraries as community house and offer much more than book depot and access is the need of the hour that we already have understood because um, people are talking about why do we need libraries when we have internet so uh, this is the uh, time we ha we are changing ourselves and we have to do much more library have started offering amenities like i have shown you one picture where they have changed the entire library building how to accommodate the different types of users in a library in qatar uh, i saw there are women they come on every thursday so they are inviting different communities and uh, so that they can spend their time and uh, uh, that way uh, libraries are attracting the entire community but our work is must uh, less recognized because we have already contributed in job uh, by assisting the job creators small to medium sized business but in that way we have not got that much recognition information is a marketable Excuse community me? yes one minute yes so traditional roles are becoming very becoming less frequent and in the area of entrepreneurial opportunities open to librarians Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.